So uh, you were saying how uh, fishing is a joyful thing. Explain that. Yeah, um, and the name is Han. The surname is Mulayat. I'm a third generation traditional fisher from a small fishing village called Dorangai, um, about 350 kilometers north from Cape Town. Um, and I mean, yeah, um, fishing is just more than an activity to me. I mean, it's, it's really, you know, uh, activity that reflects um, where I came from. Um, and a lot of it in, in, in how I am where I am today. When you say when you say reflects of where we, we'll get to it today, but when you say reflects of where you came from, tell me about where you came from. Okay, I came from a, a, a fishing community. Ah, okay. But okay. first, I come from a fishing family. Ah. Okay, but, um, how many how many generations? I'm, I'm the third one. Uh -huh. So before that, it was. My father and his father, um, and that's how far I I can trace from from. You know, there's there's much more activities, but, but the ones that that were very fine, uh, which I get the opportunity to speak to my grandma, and my grandma, mother's mother. Um, you know, for what they remember. Uh, so you don't tell any fishing tales. You got to be accurate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you know what. They mean? In everyone's time, they come this time where you, where you want to explore or find yourself. Isn't mean, that one that I, that I found? Like, um, there's a connection between my roots and the ocean. Uh -huh. um, well, when, you, when did you really realize that connection? What made you... What, is there an incident that happened you say, Oh, this is me. I gotta be here. Uh, look, uh, I mean, it's, take it from, from, from being like at the age of nine, ten, um, you have the opportunity to, mm -hmm. to, to go with your dad on a boat um, and spend like, you know, a day or two at that boat. Although he was employed by uh, a commercial fishing company, because he was the skipper of the boat, he was allowed to for me, it's a sudden uh, to take him okay. with for... for uh, enjoy your coffee and biscuits. Yeah, we, we can talk to you. No, no, no. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't want it, I don't want it to get too cold. Okay, go ahead. So, um, yeah, and, and ever since that, you know, growing up with that memory and, and you know, become actively part. Because clearly my, my, my mom and my dad were very hard. Um, at a very young age, my dad passed away. So wow. I was raised uh, for quite a long time by a single parent, which is my mom. Um, we were three in the house. Me, my uh, elder sister, and the younger one. Um, you know, I was very much uh, privileged to, to afford to, to at least complete my secondary level of education, um, but unable to go further because of a lot of other issues. But, but however, ever since I've become part in, in the activity of fishing, getting mm -hmm. direct involved, to practice what I learned from it. my dad, you know, you feel that all of a sudden there's this calmness sometimes. But now, but now you're a big to-do in Cape Town here, this area here. What brought you to this area? What brought you to Cape Town? I mean, uh, Cape Town is, 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 is actually where there's a lot of our challenges that we face in the rural areas. Ah. The solutions is, is, is within you. It's, it's within Cape Town, you know, it's within a city. Um, but that doesn't mean that we need to come to the city in order to, to, to live in the city, but, but make use of, of what the city offer for, for rural communities, uh, like a community like that, in terms of markets for, for our products. So um, what brings me here is the opportunity to explore and and find ways and means how how local fish products, um, you know, which was for generations seen as a food cheap labor or as a food cheap food source, um, can become available and served in higher quality uh, restaurants. You know, it's, it's okay. So now you're more of an advocate for the fisher for the fisher people. I would say fisher people for the fisher people. Um, does this include like politics and not just business and finance with them? No, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm for many years, I'm, I'm active. I'm an activist for, for fishing for fishing rights. You know, I, I uh, spent a lot of, of the past 20 years dedicated my time 
um, with regards to the issue of human rights versus, you know, the, the, the right of species. Um, now, our right of species are not, cannot be seen as a way of a competition tool when, when we need to, meaning by that is I need to be a business person in order to have access to my resources. That is not the case. I, I'm a traditional fisher, so, so even before they come with, with, the, with the management tools, is where I found my my roots were, were actively involved in fishing. So, so not being able to, to be successful to, to getting rights as, as a family, as a fisher, as a community, to getting access to dead resources means that actually our culture, you know, our, our practice, our Tradition were, were sort of cut out because if we can't practice that, we can't provide food, we can't provide food, we can't provide the dignity. So we can't even think about how we're going to be a healthy society if we can't do the basic thing, which is provide food for your kids. So, but you then show attention to, to a region of food, of wealth, of you know, but, but we don't want to be rich, to, to say it again. We just want to, to have the access to practice our culture. And then clearly if our culture means that there is an economy attached to it and we can share our culture with respect of catching the fish, and we can share that fish with, with, with much more plates, and that plate can sustain our livelihood as fish, then we need to do that. We need to then create an opportunity for fishing community you know, to be able to, to supply their cases. Well, I must ask you though, uh, because you have all these big countries, not just corporations, but countries coming and troll or whatever you call it, the, 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 your, your fishing ground, let's put it that way. Uh, how do you work with that? How do you. I mean, clearly it's. it's it's not an issue that is accepted by us. It's clearly not. Um, but, but that being there, you know, can be our focus as a fisher. Because for many generations, that was maybe the focus of our previous leaders to focus on that activities and in the meantime neglect what we need to have in order to, to progress. I mean, the real view of, of, of international fishers, fishing in our waters without our own people having access to dead resources, is a political issue. That's a political failure. You know, a politician should feel bad, a leader should feel bad, who are in a position of making such decisions that your own people have, but the people that are chasing the economy have, it's like this so, way. Wow. Well, well, then tell me about this, since you, you, you're talking about what you do locally, but what you do with your, with your, with your community. You now, what successes have you had? What's on the horizon? How do you think you're going to approach this, uh, this battle? I think, really, uh, number one is, is to open up the opportunities that, that, that don't really exist. You know, sort of, it's occupied by, by your big companies. And part of our job is our reason, for example, is to interrupt. To, you know, interrupt the supply chain, the value chain, which is owned by the commercial company, and sort of break it down and bring it back to fishing communities, so that they get sense of community, sense of the resource that I get as a fisher will be of a benefit for the woman that will work after before it left my community. Okay, a sense of of do I will live my face as a fisher, that face there. Out on tables instead of, you know, brand nicely designed with all sort of represented but not coming if you follow the money, not end up with the fish. But, but clearly on this space of, of a traditional system and, and, and being able to participate in the whole value chain and not only in fishing alone because that alone can sustain our, our livelihood. They, they need to, to happen more with the fish that you uh, Not only the price that you increase, but, but the quality checks and, and the cleaning and the processing of that fish. That labor should be coming from that community because the women work for 20, 30, 40 years learning from their parents how to work with them. So where's the best quality material? Where's the best quality? But 
the opportunity to be taken away from the community, out of the community. Because, you know, I need to make three million in order for me to clean this fish. And not, not, I need to clean the fish because it's like part of the identity of the community. I think that, that is for us to uh, that, that status quo, the community is not able to supply the type of product that I can offer to a client. We need to change that thing. Uh, okay, well, I want to thank you for this little bit of time we had, and perhaps we can talk again sometime. Yeah, no, for sure. Okay, sure. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.